eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the. What is up, guys? We uh, we're about to go on a uh, on a little mountain ride on the R6. We uh, I say we, me and a buddy on his ground, we went, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take the R6 because. I was planning on riding today on the R6, um, and I just wanted to go up there and, and you know, just ride around and get the feel for it, because uh, I've been on the Grom for so long, I haven't rode this thing in forever. So, we're going to take the R6 today, we're going to do a little scripture Sunday, do a little vlogging, do a little riding, we're going to have a blast. So, uh, today's verse that I'm going to go over with, um, it is going to be the story of Jonah and the whale. Now, most of you know this story. Again, if you watch my videos, you'll know that uh, I also did... Which one was it? Oh, crud. I don't think it was the walking on water one. Uh, maybe it was, but it's going to be uh, slightly similar to, um, to it. I'm just going to read a little segment because this story is very, very short. Uh, and I'm probably going to do multiple, multiple videos on Jonah and the uh, and the well. But um, something I want to talk about today is just kind of an overview of the story and how how I just feel like you know there's always a, a Jonah in our life, which is us. There's a well in our life, which could be our problem, but it can also be our uh, safe place. It can be our place of security. Um, it can also be uh, a trap set by the enemy, but depending on how we look at it as opposed to how God meant it for our life to be, we can understand things a little bit more and relate more to this story. So, um, just one little bit of scripture I want to read. It starts out, uh, this book is only five chapters, so if you guys can read it, go home get your Bible out. I say go home, but you're probably at home already watching it, watching this video. Uh, get your Bible out. Get an app. I have the version app. Great, great app. I love it. I use it every day. Um, so it's going to be Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. And it's titled, Jonah Runs from the Lord. <laughs> Sounds familiar, right? Uh, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Excuse me. Get up and go to the great city, city of Nineveh, announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board hopefully to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Excuse me guys, I know um, I can't pronounce most of those names very well. I'm so glad Joan is a common name, <laughs> so I can say it. But, um, yeah, so I laugh at part of the story because, uh, you know, I obviously know how it ends. But how, how likely is that of us as well that, that when Lord, the Lord tells us to do something, we, uh, we go, huh? And we go in the other way. We run away. So, Jonah, instead of going to the city, he turns the opposite direction and tries to run away from the Lord. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you run away from the Lord or what he was thinking. But the last place, if I was to even do that, was uh, would not be to go into an ocean or sea where, you know, <laughs> you could get swept up by a storm. But, you know, I guess that was, you know, with transportation being like it was back, way back then, you know, like, I guess that was a good idea. I don't know. He's on the ship and then the Lord causes a great and mighty storm to come upon the ship. And there's all kinds of people from from all over that uh, that are on the ship as well. A couple of different things. Why would God 
cause a storm for just one person where there's all different kinds of people that their safety could be injured but then it just kind of dawned on me God will do what he will to get his point across or to get that person's destiny across the board if, if that makes sense so he'll keep everybody else safe he'll shake you up to get you back on track but he won't ca cause harm harm to others they all cast lots to see who the gods are mad at as it says in scripture and all the other people start praying to their gods and then they ask and then they realize that Jonah's God who is Lord who made the heavens the earth and the the sea and then they all gasp they're like oh, how could you <laughs> how could you run away from the Lord he's angry at you as all the other people they didn't worship the Lord so they were they knew they were in big trouble and Jonah said all this trouble is because of me um, throw me overboard and the storm will cease well they didn't want to do that because they didn't want to be <laughs> uh, charged with murder for Jonah so they kept fighting the storm and finally they said to the Lord that you know don't hold us accountable for for the death of this man and they threw him overboard and then the storm stopped and they uh, it says they made a sacrifice or they uh, sacrificed uh, I don't know what it was, I'm sorry, but they, they uh, sacrificed something to the Lord and worshipped Him. Okay, I don't know if you guys realize how awesome that is, but even in a crisis, in a storm like that, where the non-believers threw, threw a guy overboard because of a storm, the storm stopped, and then they worshipped the Lord. But is that's just a, a testament of how God can use you, how God can use your crisis, how God can use your struggle in your marriage, your struggle in your family, your struggle with legal issues, so that He can get glory out of it, and then He can make other people believe in him and worship him and turn to him so Jonah gets thrown down into the the ocean the sea wherever he's at and it said the Lord arranged for a big fish to come and not eat Jonah but to come and hold captive for three days and three nights ha huh, that sounds familiar to hmm, Jesus and a praise to to the Lord and and knows how faithful and how loving and how enduring he is and how he will hold his promises and how he'll forgive us and he it's almost like he breaks out a uh, a sense of praise and worship in his struggle and in his pain it's 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 hard to say I don't know if he was lifting his hands up he might have been I don't know if he was curled up into a ball praying and weeping and crying I don't know it doesn't say that but just from reading his prayer to to the Lord it to me it almost sounds like he was just worshiping God and giving him all the glory which he deserves and by that time the Lord arranged the the fish to spit Jonah out and then Jonah doesn't ask God God comes to Jonah and tells him well, one more time go to the city I've told you to go to and tell them about the judgment I've prepared for them if they don't change their ways okay so Jonah goes he goes and tells everyone it's a big city um, over a hundred thousand people it says that's a big city 
to tell, for you to tell what's going to happen. And uh, I, I Googled it, I looked it up, like, what is modern day Nineveh? And it's in, it's in Iraq. And it was uh, a great and mighty place back in biblical days. And uh, Jonah was given the task to go tell him. And he told him. And the king took off his robes, put on burlap, it says, and mourned for not only himself but his people. And he made a decree to go on a fast, everyone to go on a fast. And that not even the animals can eat. They have to go on a fast. And if, let's see. Oh. And since everybody repented and truly turned back to God and gave Him glory and got rid of their evil ways, it said God changed His mind. He got upset at God because He changed His mind. And he told, he told God in, I guess, a, an outburst that he said he knew this would happen because he knew how faithful and forgiving God is. And I can see where Jonah's coming from because it's almost like being at your job or your workplace and saying, telling someone you, you, you're going to do this for them, but your higher up or your manager or your supervisor or whoever um, says the opposite and vice versa. Um, maybe you, you're unable to do something or uh, you just don't maybe have the power or um, control over that situation. But then a higher up, you know, says, oh, we can, you know, we can do that or no, that's OK. We'll, we'll do this. Um, and it's kind of like that and you know if you've ever been in that kind of situation you kind of understand so Jonah was a little upset because Jonah said God's gonna do this because y'all are doing this they repented they they changed their ways and God spared them so that I'm not saying that makes Jonah look bad but John Jonah emotionally probably felt like that he probably felt like oh now I look like a liar and then it said Jonah went off into the distance to uh, to watch what was gonna happen to the city and as he was sitting there God arranged a plant to come up and provide shade for Jonah as he was watching so he felt cool and he felt comfortable well then he also arranged a worm to come eat the plant and to come kill it and then God arranged for a, a, it says, a scorching east wind to come over Jonah. And it was so hot, Jonah pleaded out and just said, it's better to die than to be like this. And God said, is it your right to be angry at the plant? And Jonah said, yes. And then God said, you neither put the plant there or took it away. How much more important is the people of that city? Because they're living in spiritual darkness. There's so many points in this story, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> but if God cares that much, it says in Scripture, about it's the birds that he'll provide for them how much more does he care about us but God cares so much about Jonah as he does all those 124,000 wicked people God loves the most holy person the same as the most sinful person He, he cares about that person's life. He cares about where they're going to spend the rest of their life. Because it's if it's not with God, it's away from God. And God doesn't want that. He created us to be with Him forever. 
it's kind of like when we build something for ourselves it's like we don't want to give it away like when I rebuilt this bike when I put it back together I, I wanted to keep it to myself did I want to like give it to someone else for the rest of their life no <laughs> I want to enjoy it and I did and it was mine and I got to almost in a sense cherish it in a way because I had a sense of pride about it because I put it back together with my hands but all glory goes to God because if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for him he wouldn't have blessed the work of my hands. you're going through a struggle I know I talk about storms and problems and stuff like that all the time I, I don't want to be a negative Nancy I guess but <laughs> maybe it's something you you didn't do correctly maybe it's something God's working out with you in your particular situation um, you, you can't get approved for the house you want maybe God has a, a better plan for you maybe God doesn't want you there right now are you having a horrible time at school with one of your teachers maybe that's a great opportunity to really build a relationship and get close to that teacher maybe die to yourself take down your your curtain of pride show a little bit of you human a little bit of humanity under your skin and maybe that's going to be a great way to witness to your teacher i don't know what's going on i don't know what kind of work god's doing in you right now god has given you opportunities in your life to become more like christ to become more holy to become more righteous on this earth and like Jesus said I've come to give life and life more abundantly that means this life and then the, the afterlife with him multiple points I want to make on Jonah and the well and I know my videos are ridiculously long on Sundays and I have ADD and I know when I watch them I get kind of sidetracked so I want to keep them around the 10 15 minute mark you guys let me know what's a good time let me know if you watch the whole video let me know if you get kind of on track and then I lose you. Let, let me know, guys, because that'll help me provide more and better content for you guys because what I think might be good might be bad, you know? And I have the guys tell me I'm doing a good job, but I don't have the guys tell me I'm doing a bad job. Well, maybe I have. <laughs> I can't really say. But let me know what a good time limit for you guys is. I'm going to end this one out, guys. I'm going to have future, not series, but future videos on Jonah and the Whale and talk about a couple of things. I'm going to go more in detail about the boat and the guys that were with them. I'm going to go more into detail about Jonah's personality. I'm going to go more into, into detail about the city uh, and the people in it. Um, so I'm going to end this one out, guys. I'm going to pray. Um, pray over, you know, I guess this, this message, really. Pray over for you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to, to share your word. Thank you for the message that you've given me. And thank you for truly allowing me to access your word every day. I, I, I thank you for that, God. And I pray that I become more consistent in your word. I pray that even if it's just a little, you speak to me in that little bit about amount of time, God. And I thank you for speaking to me, God. And I thank you for revealing stuff to me that I would have never have known or never realized from listening to a preacher or a pastor or a mentor or another follower lord you speak directly to me through your word and i thank you for that i pray over people's lives i pray over the jonas out there that are going through a hard time that have been bit that have been given a a big mission a, a big plan and a big destiny that that they're going to go through some things god but I pray that they keep right on track with you and that they continue to, to keep their eyes on you, God, and they continually seek to have a personal relationship with you and that you just bless them abundantly and you show them a little bit of the reward, God, because we know what the reward is and we just have to visualize it. We have to go after it. We just can't lose faith and hope, God. And I thank you for determination. I thank you for, for persistence and I thank you for all these humanly actions that that we can take that bring us closer to you because you cre created them all so god i thank you for 
for everything you've done. And I thank you for continually blessing me in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.